egghead researchers trying to understand why people couldn't get along with other people who didn't share their beliefs about reality. And then we stumble onto Ernest Becker's work and, you know, his concept of death denial being central to understanding human behavior struck us as um, critically important. You know, in our gut, we were like, yeah, uh, that, that we're onto something. But our work was never framed in developmental terms. So we just said, oh, people don't like death. And in their efforts to deny that, a lot of unsavory things result. And, um, you know, the two people that were most influential to us, uh, one is a guy named Phil Shaver, who's an attachment theory guy, and the other's Bob Firestone, because right about the same time, nobody in academic psychology took us very seriously, except for Phil and, and Bob, who each pulled us aside. Your dad wrote to us, and we used to go to conferences with purple ditto sheets, because uh, no one would publish our work. And I honestly don't know, I will ask Bob when I see him next, you know, how he found one of these. But he wrote to us in the mid, it had to be 1986 or 87, and he was like, you guys keep doing what you're doing. And we were like, wow, this is very good. Because at the same time, Phil Shaver, who's more of a traditional academic, not that Bob is not, but here's this guy in the academy who said, this is very important work, but with all due respect, people do not descend from the maternal shoot explicitly aware either of themselves or of their mortality. So you have a shit ton, if you'll pardon the expression, of theoretical work to do. Because the, even if we grant everything that you're saying about people, um, you've not given us any insight about how those things come to be, psychodynamically speaking. And, um, you know, so it was Bob Firestone and attachment theory, which I think are quite compatible, um, that really gave us the developmental piece of the picture. And uh, that was both exciting as well as uplifting because uh, we come from Becker's point of view. Bob's work converges on the same ideas, uh, you know, from the existential psychodynamic perspective that we were blithely ignorant of. It's, it's really nothing to be proud of, but, you know, we got PhDs in experimental psychology unscathed by knowledge. And <laughs> so we were too busy designing experiments to actually have acquired the kind of intellectual background to give our theoretical ideas disciplinary flesh. And then to find, besides Bob's work theoretically, we were always particularly, well, speaking for myself, I, I found the, the clinical studies to be especially revealing and, and to complement what we do exquisitely because um, we're, I, or I'm proud of the work that we do, and I think the experiments are important, necessary, but not sufficient. But when the clinicians weigh in, and they come to exactly the same conclusions, I was like, wow, this is actually, uh, you know, they have this, the Eastern say that all roads can get you to the truth, uh, but here was a good example of that being the case. I mm -hmm. think that was pretty neat. And so that was it. No, everyone else was, this is stupid, don't do it. And, um, you know, the two folks that encouraged us and uh, very grateful to this day.